Well, welcome to the Widow's Oil. Today we are going to look at the scripture which says, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. Um, let us have a look if that scripture uh, is correctly applied to the state of Israel as is commonly done. Um, and people um, commonly will say those who bless uh, the country Israel today in 2023 uh, will be blessed. And those nations or people who curse them, there will be a curse upon um, them because this is very common. Um, and so... I'd like to have a look at it. So that we find uh, in Genesis 12, verse 3. So let us have a look there at the promise to Abram. It says, now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. What a beautiful promise. All the families of the earth will be um, blessed in Abram. Now, um, firstly, I want to point out that this promise was made to Abram and not you know, um, the the nation Israel, but we can say, okay, since it was made to Abram, and Abram is the father of Jacob, who uh, is the father of the nation Israel, um, we can say that this promise applies to, to Israel, the, the Israelite nation. So um, that uh, um, is something I want to look at because um, I want to look at how must we look at this from our perspective as being under the eternal covenant. Um, must we see it the way it's generally seen? Because I feel that it is often used as a way to actually engender fear in people um, and make them be quiet about the truth of the scripture by just saying, well, um, you know, those who bless, bless Israel will be blessed and those who curse Israel will be cursed. And our nation is going to be cursed if we say anything about what is happening um, and we, we have any criticism. I feel that is um, used in a, in a unbiblical way um, to engender fear. And we know that God never gave us a spirit of fear. We, we read in Timothy, God gave us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, not a spirit of fear. So that is um, my problem with that, besides the fact that it's unscriptural. Now, in order to, to understand this, we need to just remember again, um, who is Abram's seed? Um, if you want to, you can go and look at my two-part video, which is who, uh, who is Abram's seed? Uh, who, who is or are Abram seed part one and part two that would give you more insight um, but for now let's just summarize here in Galatians 3 um, in Galatians 3 verse 16 it says now to now to Abram and his seed were the promises made he does not say and to seeds as of many but as of one and to your seed who is Christ. So that's the important thing we must burn into our hearts. It must be written on our hearts. And to your seed who is Christ. Abram's seed is Christ. And then yeah, in the end, he says, there is um, uh, um, in Galatians 3 verse 28, the very well-known passage, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Jesus Christ. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abram's seed and heirs according to the promise. So write on your heart, if you are Christ's, then you are Abram's seed. So Abram's seed is Christ and those who are in Christ. So we said that all families of the earth can be blessed today by being 
um, for turning to Jesus Christ and being in Christ. And then we are counted for the seed. So now I would like to look how this blessing um, and cursing actually works in our day. Because there are many false prophets, just like Jesus warned us, who twist the scriptures and who use fear um, to actually um, control people and control their minds and shut them up. So let us have a look there. If you look in Matthew uh, 25, um, there is in Matthew 25, there are um, different parables. And there is from verse 31 onwards to the end of Matthew 25, we find this, uh, the son of man will judge the nations. So let us read that. It says there from verse 31, when the son of man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Now, what is very, very fascinating is if we look at Genesis 12, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. The promise made to Abram and we compare it here with Matthew 25, the judgment of the nations. We find the two groups again. Come you blessed of my father. It is those who ministered to um the least of these, my brethren, and then depart from me, you curse it, was those who did not minister. We did not minister to you. You be, and Jesus explains, who is you? So obviously, yeah, they're referring to Christ. And he says, in as much as you did not minister to the least of these, you did it not to me. Because Jesus um, says that, he is his people in the same way as what we say, Abram being blessed means that his descendants or his seed is being blessed. But now we are not speaking of physical seed. We Remember we said that his seed is Christ and all those who are in Christ. So that's the big lesson from Galatians 3. So yeah. We again see 
Bless those who bless you. Curse those who cursed you. But it says those are, are who, who um, treated Christ's people well are blessed of the Father. And those who did not, they are cursed. You cursed. Um, it's interesting to me that it doesn't say you cursed of my father. It just says you cursed. So you can see there, Matthew 25 is the same spiritually as yeah, in Genesis 12. Now, the doctrine is that this refers to the state of Israel, that the modern state of Israel that came into being in 1948. But yeah, if we look at the New Testament, it is showing us to who is this promise pertaining. And if you understand Galatians 3, you understand what Jesus is saying. Yeah, it's actually very clear, but um, if we are gripped by false doctrines and delusions, all you will hear when you hear me say this is that I am an anti-Semite and a hater. But I am showing you what the scripture shows. So I will either confirm what the Holy Spirit has shown you and you will find joy in my words, or you will you will you will feel angry at me. If you are feeling angry, you must ask yourself if you perhaps have a wrong doctrine and you are reacting in the way that we always do when we hear the truth and we believe a lie. And you should search the scriptures um, before you, you just shut me down and, and call me a name because you could be wrong. The scriptures say, be careful you think you stand lest you, you fall. And Paul told his enemies, am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And think of Stephen, how the people shut their ears when Stephen was telling them the truth and they did not want to hear. Do not do that. Do not be like that. But be a good Berean and go search the scriptures and see, make sure you understand correctly. Because yeah, in Matthew 25, we can clearly see that this problem, this promise of who is blessed is actually upon the um, people of Christ being believers in Christ. So in other words, if a nation is ministering unto believers in Christ, let's just say generally Christians, they are treating the Christian well. Um then that nation will be blessed. Um, this even you took me in makes me think of a lot of refugees who come from countries where they are persecuted. A lot of people are against the refugees. And while I agree there's a there, there could be a political um, thing behind that, bringing in, in lots of peoples, we must also, on the other hand, remember there could be refugees. And is that country actually taking fleeing Christians in? Are they taking them in? You see? So this is regarding the treatment of believers. Yeah, also, if the believers are not treated well, okay, then... There is, it's, it says there, depart from me, you curse it. So there is a, a cursing there regarding um, ill treatment of those who belong to Jesus Christ. So the blessing and the cursing is not according to the New Testament on the state of Israel, but upon believers in Christ. That is primarily what it is. Though I would say treating anybody that is in a bad state would also show us something about that nation. Now, let us just think a little bit. Let us just think a little bit about it practically. If a nation is treating people well, especially the down and out, the people that are hungry, 
thirsty, naked. Um, if those people are treated well, along with Christians, if, if there is mercy in that nation, surely the Lord God will bless that nation. Surely things will go well. If you treat your Christians in the nation well, it will become prosperous because they will start to prosper economically and they will actually start to take care. If they are doing the right thing, if they are allowed to, to function in peace, then just naturally they will preach the gospel and just naturally there will be people from the love of Christ in their heart that they will just it will just pour out from them they will actually reach out to to even unbelievers that are hungry and thirsty and in need of physical care and they will also give them the gospel and so that nation will just naturally progress and it will go better and better so that nation will be blessed of the father Whereas if this nation is, is unmerciful, is treating the down and out badly, is persecuting its Christians so that those Christians actually flee to these nations that do take them in, what is going to happen to that nation? It is going to um, be cursed because its economy is not going to flourish, its poor and needy is going to be turn to crime and and um, there'll be gangsterism and you will start to get oppression. You will get a political system that actually oppresses and persecutes Christians and finally also it will persecute all people. So can you see in our world how you can see the, the nations that that treat Christians well, even today, they are doing well. The nations where they um, worship false gods, there is extreme poverty and horror in those nations. Um, I, can, I can name India. I can name China. Um, and, and many nations that, that have communist ideas, it doesn't go so well. So this scripture, using this scripture to just refer to, to the state of Israel is, is deceptive. And we should stop doing it and stop allowing ourselves to be manipulated. It says that in you, all the families of the earth, shall be blessed. Adam's promise is to all the nations. And so that is a wonderful thing to know. We can get all our answers from the scriptures um, and we can fight these lies um, with the scriptures rather than trying to say, well, well I'm not against um, Israel and starting to make all sorts of uh, human arguments about what is going on there. We should stop that and we should merely bring out the sword of the spirit and show our brothers and sisters in Christ the truth of the, of the scriptures that answers everything. The blessings and the curses pertain to believers today under Jesus Christ. And we are salt and light to the nations. Um, and how beautiful that is.